I'm going to call this meeting to order. Madam Secretary, a roll call when you're ready. Mr. Akersa? Here. Ms. Billman? Here. Mr. Fell? Mr. Fitch? Here. Mr. Hopkins? Ms. Wadrago? Here. Mr. Storr? Here. Mr. Trail? Here. And Mr. Turner? Here. We do have a quorum. I'd like to introduce, uh, before we get going here, uh, a new plan commissioner, Nancy Esri Wedrago. Welcome. I'm sure you'll be an asset, one of the smartest ones in no time. Believe me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So anyway, do we have any changes to the agenda? Uh, we got the minutes from the July 20th, 2017 regular plan commission meeting. Motion by Mr. Ackerson. Second. Seconded by Mr. Trail. Any changes to the minutes? Uh, in that case, uh, we'll do this on a voice vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The minutes are approved. Any, no communications? Okay. Uh, we have a continued public hearing, plan case 2307M17 and 2017A02. Proposed annexation agreement between the city and David Borchers, including rezoning a property from County AG2 to City IN1, Light Industrial, for a parcel located west of Smith Road and north of Coachman Drive at 801 North Smith Road in the county. So, Mr. Garcia. Mr. Marks actually oh, Mr. will be Marks, giving the presentation. I got it right here. <laughs> While he's setting things up, he's going to focus on the new information since the last meeting on July 20th. But as a reminder, uh, this case is for an 11.47 acre parcel. Um, it is zoned AG2 in the county, which means in order to comply with our comprehensive plan, future land use designation of industrial, it requires a rezoning. So the rezoning being sought is to IN1, light industrial slash office. Thank you. Just to briefly review what was discussed at the last meeting on July 20th for the case, uh, there were a few residents of the nearby mobile home parks and a nearby resident of the single family home to the east that uh, expressed some of the concerns that they had about the proposed development including uh, issues of uh, traffic and noise and uh, unsightliness. Uh, some of the members of the Commission had requested more information about um, access to the subject property as well as the impact of traffic so the meeting was continued to the state as well so uh, one correction that we wanted to make note from the last meeting that the property to the north uh, should have been noted as being zoned for city AG agriculture I believe it was improperly zoned and the existing land use is uh, a retired landfill and the office um, office build a small office building for the city's Arbor Division. Uh, the Landscape Recycling Center is a little more to the northwest of the subject property as opposed to directly north. Um, so just to note that correction. Um, there were, there's a draft of the annexation agreement that was also uh, attached as an exhibit. So In regards to access, uh, it was asked about staff about the potential for the property to have a different access point from Smith Road. Staff looked into the initial uh, platting and property ownership of the surrounding area and uh, traffic arrangements. Uh, the neighboring properties you'll see um, 602 North Guardian Drive, 509 Smith Road, and that little vacant lot that's just directly west to that southern uh, mobile home park and then on the southwestern edge of the subject property um, all of those properties are owned by uh, the Flexing Gate Corporation and the 
property at 602 North Guardian Drive along with the Flex and Gate facility to the west were all arranged in an annexation agreement and development agreement with the city and that property owner and they were platted as such in uh, plan case 1703 S98 approximately 20 years ago. Um, so that street configuration was intended to be uh, to end as a cul-de-sac and um, so you have um, trying to provide an access there would be difficult because the configuration is set in that uh, particular arrangement and you would have to deal with a different property owner than the uh, applicant, uh, Mr. Borchers, who is requesting to annex uh, his property into the city. So you would have issues of cost and time as well that would make it um, a, a different access, um, hard to achieve. The next uh, questions that were brought, some of the nearby residents had expressed concerns about traffic. Uh, some of the members of the commission had expressed concerns about um, traffic on the road as well. The uh, city engineer provided some information based on uh, trip generation uh, standards for light industrial use and uh, residential use that is consistent with um, that of a mobile home park based on you know industry used standards as such. Um, for the existing mobile home parks of the, to the south and to the east, along Butsau Drive and Smith Drive, there is an existing traffic count of approximately 700 vehicles per day with a peak hour traffic volume of uh, 70 vehicles in its busiest hour. Uh, the city engineer did an estimate on uh, if the site were fully developed to uh, its of the, of the acreage that based on the acreage that it that it has approximately you know 12 acres or so if that site were to be full, fully developed a high estimate for light industrial use would be an would be approximately 600 vehicles per day with a peak hour traffic volume of uh, 60 vehicles in one hour at most that equals about one more vehicle per minute um, it was it was asked, you know, what the comparison would be if that property were developed in residential as opposed to its light proposed light industrial use. Um, so those are some numbers for comparison. Uh, it's also the city engineer's opinion that uh, even if that site were developed with that high estimate of traffic count, um, that it would require um, no improvements for the intersections at Smith Road. Or I'm sorry, at Butsell Drive and Guardian Drive, or Guardian Drive and University Avenue. The that's a three-way stop and a signaled intersection, uh, respectively. Uh, we the city talk has talked with the applicant in regards to some of these concerns expressed during the last meeting, and uh, made some changes to the proposed annexation agreement to the draft. Also, uh, the, there would be no changes to the area's level of service. Uh, in the opinion of the city engineer. For the uh, annexation agreement, some of the changes that have been agreed to with, with the city and the property owner include uh, restricted uses that might uh, generate um, higher traffic counts or might be inappropriate for the property. And those uses are a convenience store, motor bus station, truck terminal and truck wash, automobile truck trailer or boat sales or rental, gasoline station, truck rental, truck stop, and uh, towing service. The applicant has also agreed to some extra screening and buffering requirements beyond what the zoning ordinance already uh, requires. That would be one tree and three shrubs for every 30 feet of frontage towards the south and towards the east. Uh, that would be required, um, that would, as I said, that would be uh, additional in addition to uh, current zoning ordinance requirements and that would come with a required planting for any portion of that property that's developed so it, if um, the southeast portion were to be developed in five years from now the planting would be required um, at along with a uh, so a landscaping plan would have to be submitted with any building permit and it would have to be um, approved for any final certificate of occupancy the 
agreement because the applicant intends to install um, his uh, intends to develop uh, the northeast portion of the property for his business right away it is put into the language of the current draft that um, the north 200 feet of his property's frontage along uh, Smith Road would have to be immediately planted um, and a light would be have to be part of a landscaping plan submitted with any building permit because um, because that prop part of the property is being developed right away and that would be consistent with the requirements for the rest of the property as it were to be uh, developed in the future whenever that may be so with that the uh, staff recommendation is for uh, approval of the rezoning of the proposed annexation agreement as proposed. Uh, may I answer any questions? Any questions for Mr. Marks? Or for the city engineer or and the public city works engineer director. Here. Here. Do you want to address this? Or do you, do you want to come up, please? I don't know if there's going to be any questions, but just in case. Yep, Mr. Trail. Um, were the traffic estimates based on the idea of one business or up to four? Full build out. Excuse me? Full build out. Which means how many All development and a half all acres would be fully built, fully built out. So four different businesses. I'm not saying how many. I'm saying 11 and a half acres would be fully built, and that would be the maximum traffic volume. Okay, thanks. And just uh, I mean, just to, I can go into more detail if you yeah, want. But I, if you look at the Institute of Traffic Engineers, they have trip generation manuals. There's two manuals about so thick that go into all the different types of zoning, and there's different ways of computing trip generation or vehicles per day. And in this case, you look at light industrial. You look at 11 and a half acres. It's simple math looking at the graph, and that's where the numbers come from. And this is based on. Uh, many examples of like type um, uh, uses <clears throat> and trip generations that are actually counted. So, to answer your question, it's full build out. It's a worst case scenario. Um, is there any indication of what types of vehicles that means? No, at this point, we're vehicles? looking, it's a combination of you know, trucks, pickups, cars, could be any combination thereof. But um, the 600 is total vehicles. From a local resident's standpoint, 600 large trucks would be substantially different than right. 600 passenger cars. Right. Any further questions for the city? Mr. Store? No, no questions. Okay, no questions. I think we're good. All right, thank you very much. Now, if I could just uh, once again briefly outline the uh, Procedures for a public hearing. Uh, the petitioner will address the uh, commission if, if they choose, uh, and uh, then any proponents of the uh, petition will address the commission. Uh, then any opponents of the uh, petition will address the commission. The uh, pr the petitioner then will have a chance to uh, rebut, um, and then uh, we will close the public hearing and discuss and possibly vote. So, sir, if you could remind everybody who you are, please. Uh, David Borchers, uh, the potential developer. Um, Thank you. We've met with Urbana staff and uh, agreed to delete areas we thought that might uh, be uh, a deterrent uh, to the neighbors and, and agreed to additional screening and stuff like that to be a better neighbor and uh, that's all I got got to say so could you remind us again about what you're anticipated for the one development before us I know we've got the whole lot okay but the amount of traffic especially truck traffic on a the, daily basis yeah there's not going to be I mean the truck traffic is basically going to be limited to pickup truck you know maybe a one-ton truck you know car uh, of that nature and like I said if you know if we have a delivery of over 50 pounds 
it's going to have to come LTL on a on a semi truck. Which if if somebody in the mobile home park had something that, that weighed that much, they'd have to be the same way. And you know, UPS or Federal Express deliveries are are normal stuff. But could you give us an idea about how much, like how often a day, or that kind of thing? Uh, we could go without a month for nothing, and you know, it just depends on the what what we order. You know, on how it comes, how it's packed. Um, most everything, you know, comes usually Federal Express or UPS. So. Uh, I'm Alan Dial. I have the property at the end of Smith Road out there. Uh, I'm just kind of curious. He's not saying what he's planning on doing in the future. I know we just got a great big mini ware storage warehouse facility in Champaign he put up. I know uh, Treat Brothers went out of business. He took that over. And I know uh, you ain't going to deliver drywall in a pickup truck. Uh, I'm wondering how he's going to do all this if he ain't going to have big trucks in there. All right, I will ask him that after, after your testimony and, and some others will bring you back up and ask. And him. I haven't heard anybody say anything about the uh, property owners in there. The people live in mobile homes. I realize they're just mobile homes, but they are homes. Probably you people consider them trailer trash, but they're not. These are homes. Nobody considers them that, sir. Well, I Believe wouldn't me. think so, yeah. but sometimes you make me wonder. Well, uh, I, I, I assure you we're going to give you full consideration and treat you just like any other neighborhood. Well, I hope so, because yeah. you haven't in the past, and that concerns me. That's all I got to say. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Any questions? No? All right. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak to this? Actually, I did have you a do? I did have a question for Mr. Dial. Mr. Dial, I'm sorry. Could you come back up? He got a question he just okay. thought of. <laughs> yes, sir. What would you, what's your opinion of the condition of the road, Smith Road uh, as, it, as it currently exists? They're in good condition for cars, automobiles, but for great big drywall delivery trucks, no. For semis, no. They come in there for the city, they find it even hard to turn around. So, no, they're not going to hold up for that. Matter of fact, I've had not trouble with the city, but I've talked to the city about the road going to my house because they back little garbage trucks up there, or used to, waiting to, to, for the gates to open to go in. They'd tear the crap out of that drywall, or that uh, uh, asphalt. But the city has come out, we had conversations, they come out and fixed it, and they made it look nice. And all of it looks nice now, but them big trucks ain't going to let it stay that way. And I don't think it's wide enough now. We've got school buses come in there, picking up children, bringing them home. You've got a couple of buses comes in there to pick up uh, handicapped children. There's a couple of homes in a trailer park with that. There's always buses coming through there. That's what we've had conversations about Guardian West about because they parked their great big semis down there. And these buses, you can't see the traffic coming in or out. You have to go around the semis. Nobody's had a wreck yet, but it's a wonder. Uh, I just don't think the road is wide enough for that kind of traffic. And if he puts many warehouses in, like he did in Champaign, uh, these storage warehouses, there's going to be a lot more traffic. And I don't think anybody's taking that in consideration. Of course, he ain't telling that, but he may not. I don't know. We'll talk about that further. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think, has a question for you. So are you, the, the, uh, are these illegally parked semis, is that what you're talking about? Or Yes. They park right next to a fire hydrant. Uh, we, uh, my wife's called in about it because when she turns to come out on the university to go to work, you can't see around them semis. You've got to pull out in the main part of traffic before you can make that turn. Like I say, nobody's had a wreck yet, but it's just a matter of time. So when you call, does anything happen? They've done a little bit since then. It's not, it used to be four or five semis parked up and down that whole area in there. Now there might be one or two. They, it's not as bad as it used to be, but they still do it. And um, she's called the fire or the police, the fire department. Once she called the fire department, they finally come out and made some changes. But 
and I know the truck drivers come from out of state, so they, they don't know, but there's no signs put up out there, do not park here or nothing. They still park there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else care to uh, address the plan commission on this? Mr. Borches. Yeah, if you could just, I uh, think you've spoken to it a little bit, but c come on up here, please, sir. Uh, just speak to any future plans you have. Uh, I know from the last testimony, immediate use is still going to be uh, agriculture, but. Yeah, he, his concern, um, you know, I, I did have a drywall supply company, and I said at the last meeting that we had here that I closed it down, and that was over two years ago. So we're not going to have drywall trucks coming and unloading. And his concern, you know, I mean, I did not take over because Street Brothers went out of business, you know. Um, there's a lot of people in town doing the same thing I'm doing, and I'm not going to be unloading drywall trucks and in and out of there, so those concerns can be put to bed. And I don't know what about many warehouses he's talking about. I have not built many warehouses. Uh, I've worked on many warehouses for people, but as for myself, I have not built any. He seems to know a lot about me that obviously he doesn't know everything um, because I have not not built them for myself. So, All right. Um, Any further questions for Mr. Borchers? Mr. Trail? Uh, I mean, it's a general question. Uh, you're going to develop a quarter of it, yes. roughly. Yes. Um, and so what's the – is this going to be – Pardon me? You know, gravel? Is it going to be all It's paved? going to be part gravel and part concrete. Okay. Um, and the rest of it we're going to farm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Well, with that, I will uh, close the public hearing, and we'll uh, discuss this and uh, possibly vote. Any thoughts about the uh, – I think we had a pretty good discussion last time of the uh, proposal in general. Any thoughts about the uh, uh, engineer's testimony or the uh, limitations on certain uses, which are really the two additions? Well, I'm, addition, really. I, I find the limitation on future uses um, an improvement. I, I think that's an improvement over what they had before. I was still trying to understand. I wish Otto had been here because I had I, I, curious about other people's impressions on traffic and I think there was something about drainage or sewer lineup last time but um, it, this certainly looks better than it did the last time it did um, I'm not sure what can be done more traffic wise uh, and given just my personal opinion of what the guy tends to do now it doesn't look like there'd be a lot of traffic, but we're looking at the whole plot. So that's what I think we have to keep in mind is what, what this is likely to look like five or ten years from now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Storr. I wonder, uh, since the city engineer is here, if the if Smith Road in its current uh, condition would uh, be considered a two-lane road That, that would allow uh, safe passage of, say, school bus, and of course you're not allowed to pass a school bus while it's loading and unloading, but uh, but allow safe uh, navigation of the road by cars going in both directions. Smith Road's a two-lane road, one lane in each direction. If a school bus and a truck went past each other, obviously they'd have to go slow, but they would be on the pavement to pass each other. It's not a very wide, wide road, but we have many chip seal 20-foot wide roads in town all over the city. We have school buses on many such streets in the city. Traffic navigates back and forth, but sure, it would be tight. No question about it. It's not like it is further west where the roads are, the, only, the travel lanes are 11, 12 feet wide. If, if, the, if Mr. Borcher's property became more developed and had uh, additional uh, businesses and such there would the what what would the city would the city kind of consider or expand making that road a little wider 
and to accommodate more traffic or what would it take to do that? Um, we have a backlog of many miles of streets that are chip and seal, and this would probably not be a high priority, to be honest with you. Um, we've been working 20 years to upgrade Airport Road, and I would invite all the plan commissioners to drive up there today at Cunningham Avenue. We finally are reconstructing it, and that's by Farm and Fleet and Frasca, and there's 500 homes to the west, and there's a, tr a hauler that has a business up there, and that road now, quite frankly, has gotten beaten up over the years. And finally, through a combination of TIF 4 money and IDOT economic development grant money, have we been able to afford to build this $3.1 million project. That's three quarters of a mile. So those are the dollars you're talking about. Smith Road that we're talking about right here comes nowhere near the traffic volumes and the weight and such as an airport road. But your point's well taken, and absolutely, we have to rate our roads as we do throughout the city. And if that um, has wear and tear, although technically it's a township road. Uh, now this portion that we annex, if it's annexed, would become city. But we chip and seal it. The count township road commissioner chips and seal it every so often. And as mentioned before, it's in pretty good shape. And we do have public works vehicles that use it daily, workday that is, uh, because our Arbor Division does report out there. And we do have trucks too, um, not semis that go in and out, our employees go to and from that site also. So it's a pretty busy road, plus lots of mobile home uh, users, vehicles too. So it's a busy road. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, uh, there was a concern that the only part that the city will be required to maintain is the frontage of this particular property. And then it looks to me, looking at the map, that there would be a stretch of <coughs> Busco Drive curving into Smith that the city would not be required to maintain. Right. Well, that's a good question, and um, if you ever looked at our corporate boundaries, you'll see that uh, in the outskirts, it uh, goes in and out of the city and county, and uh, the township is the one that is the one responsible outside our corporate limits. And basically how we handle that is every year we meet with Jim Prather or Rick Wolken, and we talk about um, show, snow, plowing, um, sharing, and trading off and if one vehicle is there for this reason and another vehicle is somewhere else for another reason we try to equitably uh, share in those responsibilities so um, that's a annual discussion that we have and cooperatively we make things more efficient by who plows what depending on if a block it's in the city two blocks it's out of the city a block it's in the city we don't pick up the plow when it's out of the city and put it back down believe me so we try to coordinate those things um, with the township or with the city of Champaign or whoever the entity might be. So, but those are cooperative discussions that we try to equitably uh, share in those responsibilities. And so, you, would you say that it would, might be likely that you would go ahead and plow this section that, you know, a couple of blocks uh, before the uh, city's official uh, responsibility begins? I could get you that answer at your next meeting. I don't have that right now. Quite frankly, um, the operations manager probably in the next 30 to 60 days is going to have those discussions. If this is an every year, we have to reassess because if this is annexed, this is new responsibility for us. We need to share that information with the township commissioner. Um, um, Lincoln Avenue is being built as we speak to Olympian Drive. Well, guess what? We're responsible for that road. Okay, where we it didn't exist before. Um, Olympian Drive is open. We talked to the city of Champaign. Do, do we pick, go to the, in the middle of the bridge and lift up our plow? Or, so we have to work those sorts of things out. But if you really want to know who's going to plow it, I could let you know. Uh, every year we put online on the website our snow manual. That gives exact detail as to where our responsibilities are. So if you're really curious, you can go to the uh, public works portion of the city website and look at our snow manual. And it goes into all those details of 
alleys, sidewalks, streets, et cetera, and uh, all those details. But right tonight, I can't tell you if we're going to plow this or the township will, but if you want to know, I could find out. Um, who is required to do the mowing alongside the road? The owner. So the west side would be the owner. Okay. The along the homes. Correct. Uh, along the mobile homes. Yeah. Typically, that's a question really for the mobile home park association that might be contracted out. I don't know um, versus the trailer park that may be adjacent to it. Um, but to answer your question, the property owner is the one responsible. What kind of signage is there on that road now? Signage? Right. Is there a, you know, no exit? Um, oh, the, no outlet that signage? That intersection mean? where it's sort of your last opportunity to turn around? Is there... I don't think there no, is. No truck parking? Is yeah. there anything along there that would... Yeah, I, I mean, I'd have to confirm that. Mr. Dial might be able to answer that, but um, I, I don't know about no outlet sign, but uh, there is a no outlet sign? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. There's Thanks. a no outlet sign. But not particularly effective. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Sure. Any further discussion on this? I, Mr. Trail? I, I wasn't at the last meeting, so some of these may be. Um, is I, this for Mr. Gray or? This is start with a step. Not exactly. So what's the, what's the analogous zoning for the current county zoning when you switch it to city zoning? It's not I and what, is it? No, the analogous zoning is City AG Agricultural, which uh, is part of the reason that this is coming before the Planning Commission in the first place is because within the annexation agreement, there is a request to rezone for the proposed use because the proposed use by the applicant is not permitted in City AG. So he is requesting a change to City I and 1. And part of that process for annexation, if there is a change in right. zoning, comes before the Planning Commission. How, how? Right. Um, how long have those homes been there? Those Are you referring to the mobile home? Mm -hmm. Well, they're homes. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure exactly, but. Um, the 70s kind of jump out at me. I don't know if anyone in the area has a. So the presence of those substantially predates the current zoning plan for that area? Yes. So I, the current comprehensive plan was developed in 2005. Yeah. I, so I. They're going to come, but you know, I kind of like, yeah, I mean, sort of notionally might like this to be industrial, but you know, there's a whole bunch of homes there already. So. I guess part of my, if I could ask Mr. Dial a quick question. Yeah. I mean, what's your biggest concern objection here? Is it the volume of traffic? Mr. Dial, could you please, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can I come up with sure. Well, there's quite a bit of traffic. Uh, I. I don't know who does all the studies, but I live there and I see what goes on every day. And there's a lot of traffic goes in there. A lot of people come back there that don't even live there. They're just lost, <laughs> to tell you the truth. And they come down in front of my, because I have a turnaround in front of, not a cul-de-sac, it's just where I made one for myself. And they come down and turn around and leave. And it says no outlet. There is no outlet signs. And down the side of both sides of the road that comes down to my house, they put no parking in there because People like to come out there and park and throw their empty bottles out. Mm. But anyway, so yeah, there's a lot of traffic in there. The other concern is uh, this water drainage. Nobody's mentioned that. 
And right now, when it rains a lot and comes down that street, it floods that trailer court. And that's before he puts in all this asphalt and everything he's talking about doing. Uh, so I don't know where the water's planned on going, and that little bitty culvert thing he put in out there is not going to carry nothing. What, which street are you talking about? Uh, the water comes down which street? The actual, well, Smith Road. The north-south. That would be east, east, where you're going into the uh, reclamation center. Mm -hmm. My property is at the end of that. You it's turn actually to the called right. Bar Avenue. Yeah, yeah, they call it Bar Avenue. Actually, in regard to drainage, we did ask about that last time, and, and if there's a site plan, there would have to be an approved drainage plan as part of that. So we're not considering that today. We're just considering the zoning. Oh, but Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's a good concern. Yeah. I'm just saying I've, what I've noticed in the past, it, it don't drain. When it gets down to the end of the road there my, in front of my house where they put up the fence the, mm -hmm. uh, along the highway there, the people in the trailer court, all the leaves blow up against that fence, so it blocks all the water mm -hmm. until I go out and dig it out, of course. They don't, but other than that, it runs over in the trailer court. And the, the ditch is really not a ditch. It's only about that yeah. deep. It probably needs to be dredged or dredged something. Dredged out, yeah. 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 Were you aware when you moved into this, uh, to your current home, that uh, the future plan for this area was light industrial? No, absolutely not. Matter of fact, where, the, where they put the landfill, that was 17 acres. It was supposed to be just for a bumper zone. That's when I talked to them, and they said, yeah, that's it. we're never going to put anything in there. So I bought the property, and like I said, six months later, they were putting garbage in there. Uh, so I don't, it wasn't zoned for that either, but it's, it's in there now. So I, I'm going to kind of circle back to my room. What's your, your biggest concern? Just well, increased I'll, I'll volume of traffic? I'll answer that, My biggest concern is our property values. And yeah. we, we lost a great deal when they moved into that 17-acre plat, of which we were a signee on the agreement for the, not the annexation of it, but the extension of it. They went upwards, 25 feet, I think it was, or something. Um, but he's right. They came in there in 1982 right after we bought the property. And, you know, that's a significant loss to us because we built a house in the country. And that was a house next to a landfill. Um, so you can it was imagine. nice to have nature down at the end of the street where um, the people put the cornfields in. Um, I kind of always suspected it wasn't likely to stay because the plat had gotten so much smaller. And the reality is, is maybe people don't really want to farm 11 acres bring heavy equipment in and out of there right. but we also thought it might go to residential and so we were very surprised to find out that it was going to be another industrial park yeah. it's another you're, you're turning it into another Carroll edition yeah. so assuming that it is rezoned what's your biggest concern that what will happen is it increased traffic is that really the yes. biggest issue you because, have uh, look I and I'm not speaking against the man he's a businessman you're not going to spend that kind of money on 11 and a half acres to do one little corner, okay? You're, that's not common sense. He's going to look to re reclaim his investment. Well, sure. And he's going to put something or sell it to somebody it. once he gets it uh, subdivided, whatever he's going to do. I don't know. But I'm just saying it's not, I know there's going to be more than what it is there now. He's not going to drag farm equipment out there to, to till up six acres indefinitely. Okay. Um, Yes, traffic is a concern. I nearly pulled in front of a, about an 11,000 tr 11, pound truck in a Mustang a week ago uh, coming out of the, the um, waste reclamation site where they take the leaves. It was a, an Arbor truck, yeah. quite a bit bigger than mine. He just pulled out into the street that I was on, and I slid about five feet when I slammed on the brakes. So that's a concern because we don't get the recognition. We're a single house down at the end of that lane. But when you continue on down, I saw in Mr. Mark's graphic, he suggested, or maybe it was the engineer, that it was 60 cars peak. That's way low, way low. I leave there at 7 o'clock in the morning, as do most of the residents out of the two trailer parks that this mostly affects. There are people in the Wilson trailer park. And you have shift change at Guardian West at 7 a.m. So peak right there from their shift alone 
it's probably 120 cars. But those, it's probably another though, 50 those cars or 60. don't actually go through your neighborhood, though. No. They, no, but he, you remember earlier when he was talking about the semis that were parking on mm -hmm. Guardian Drive and creating what I call a blind intersection? I believe that was the area he was talking about, was 60 cars peak. I, I think he was talking specifically about this portion of Smith Road that would be ad immediately adjacent to. Okay, exactly. That would, that yeah. would make After more, you go around okay, the corner. That would yeah, make yeah. more sense. Yeah. That would make more sense. Yeah, I believe you with the with the fact with the flexigate and all that right there. It's, Correct. You know, so yeah. then I misunderstood yeah, exactly no. where he's putting that yeah. number. It probably is closer to sixty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for thank you. coming up again, Mr. Gray. I have the answer to your question. The township will continue to plow that portion of Smith Road. Oh, thank you. Here we go. Oh, Mr. Store. I was going to take advantage of Mr. Gray's. Wait, are we op reopening the public hearing here? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gotta get control. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> You're doing all right. Um, all right. Further discussion. Mr. Child, do you have anything else after hearing? Uh, I don't have any more questions. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I tell you, uh, Ms. Billman. Is a fence also required? Uh, I mean, there are going to be evergreens, but I believe there was. Um, I don't know if fencing is required for the screenage. Uh, we can double check. I think a lot of times it's sort of a trade off either fences or shrubs and trees um, but but we can double check real fast okay that'd be great well mr. Hopkins had a lot of uh, concern last time um, <clears throat> essentially if I can boil down his, con his concerns based on the minutes that the road notwithstanding uh, it may be uh, you know I have no reason to question mr. gray um, but generally this site is not really planned for a big industrial development. It's got a, what I would consider to maybe an adequate road. It's not more than that. Um, I could see how bigger vehicles are going to have some trouble getting in there and out of there. And uh, your point about the trailer area long uh, predating probably Maybe even, I don't know, did we have a comprehensive plan in the 70s? When was the first comprehensive plan? Uh, predated the 70s. I know I did Late thumb 60s, through some 80s. of the old ones, and it had, at various stages in its um, history, been designated as industrial, but there was also a period where I think it was designated as a multifamily. So it had kind so of gone the, back and forth. Yeah, so there, there was, I don't think, any expectation on their part that we were going to end up where this comprehensive plan ended up, probably. Um, so those are concerns I have. Uh, I don't think that I appreciate the, the, the usage restrictions. I appreciate very much the, ex, the extra screening. I think those things will be helpful, but I still have to go back to Mr. Hopkins' concerns that in total, this property is not ready for an industrial use, especially since we, there's, all, there's all sorts of other uses that can happen besides the ones that were restricted. And we're just kind of flying blind here, other than the one known use. Um, and the, the fact that the restrictions only last 20 years, I think, has to be kept in mind as well. So those are my thoughts. Any further thoughts? or Mr. Trail? I mean, this, this looks to me like a, a property that's that I, I know it's not outside the you know certainly person who may have purchased it might have thought that well oh hey this should be something i should put to industrial use but it's specific location and it's lack of access that doesn't go through directly through a residential neighborhood to me says there's an issue here um and the only two things that spring to mind is maybe perhaps encouraging the owner to talk to the uh, owners of the properties along the uh, western border to see if perhaps 
some better access might be purchased, um, which would allow this to be, you know, developed in a way that, yes, it borders residential areas, but we have industrial and, and residential areas bordering each other all the time. Um, but, you know, that would provide access that doesn't go directly through um, the residential neighborhood. The other thing that springs to mind is that, you know, these sorts of things, is there any way to limit the size and length of vehicles which are allowed to use the road? No. Uh, the short answer is no. I mean, the, the, it's a public road. I was expecting to you, you know, to you know elaborate. We <laughs> no, along good. a little bit before. <laughs> no, that's great. You know, and I guess uh, I, I don't know if this was. I didn't see it in the report, but I think a, a important information you need to be aware of is that, you know, I contacted the owners of the Flux and Gate Corporation and talked yeah. to a high-ranking official, and they have that land for potential future expansion of the bumper plant. So they have no interest. Of selling, and I think one thing you realize this, but whenever you look at a large tract of land prior to Guardian being built, you know we think of you know general area plans, i.e., how will the land properties be served via roads? Okay, and the parcel we're talking about tonight, the 11 and a half acres. Okay, it was deemed 20 or more years ago that Smith Road was its its point. I mean that's why we agreed to the cul-de-sac, if you will, of Guardian Drive stubbing out, you know, at Butzow. So there was no intention to extend it somehow, you know, north and east to Smith Road. Smith Road has always been the access point for this property. Whether or not it should be zoned industrial, that's your decision. But, you know, you're, you're getting a little um, concerned about the access. This access was always Smith Road. I mean, and I think if you there's going to be an access point from the west, I want to make it clear to you that that's virtually impossible. The owners have future plans, don't know when, but they bought that land for future expansion. Yeah, I, and so. I'll just sort of chip in. The, the part of this that, that I'm thinking about is some kind of buffer between the mobile home park and Flexingate. And if light industrial you mean, gets- Do you mean the- uh, the proposed development. I'm saying that these plot. Oh, you think it buffers between? Yeah, yeah. It, if if it's developed properly, it can serve as a buffer between it and Flexing Gate. But Flexing Gate will come um, all the way up to the west side of this property, if, if I understand the future Good. plans. Um, so whatever that's going to be I mean that's kind of what we have to think about is is what's going to be serve as an appropriate buffer but I, I appreciate your input that Smith is pretty much the access road for whatever ends up being there is that what you're saying yeah yes. okay mr. trail can I assume that your no covered both parts of my <laughs> both the Western access and the idea of limiting um, the length and uh, weight of trucks that would be allowed to use that portion of the road? Yeah, if there's a semi-delivery to this site or any of the other lots that are built someday, that semi has you know, local delivery right to make that uh, delivery. We're not, we're not, there aren't restrictions uh, in our streets in Urbana for semis if that's a moving truck or whatever it might be. Um, that, that's a permitted use. So uh, to answer your question, as long as it's a legal, legal length, legal you know, weight, okay. but um, semis could use that road. They they make deliveries now to the Public Works uh, Armor Division on occasion, you know, for whatever it might be. So um, there's truck use. May not be always semi truck use, but there's truck use today. Um, I, I'm sure my street's exactly the same, but I would guarantee you would hear from a lot of my neighbors if a lot of semis started using the street in front of our home. Oh, I agree, but I'm just telling you that they're not prohibited. Right, but the issue here is though, what prevents that, you know, this area from developing in such a way that you do get a significant increase in traffic if we do it 
nothing. Any, yeah, any use, any uh, use that's permitted, uh, and they're industrial uses, so you could have some significant larger vehicle traffic on the road. That's what I said. We don't know. Yeah. Now it could, it could be six. I, I have no reason to doubt the estimate of the trips, but what kind of vehicles? I mean, if this yeah. is light industrial, and those are similar uses, okay, sure. worst case scenario, I think you have to assume that there will probably be trucks, okay? Yeah. That's usually synonymous with an industrial, uh, light industrial user, okay? And maybe it's, maybe it's not, and then that's great, I guess. But I think 11 and a half acres fully built, there will be more trucks probably visiting there, those businesses, whatever they might be. So that should go into the thinking process. Right. I was just trying to see what North Lincoln is just after you get across the uh, interstate. That's heavy in industrial. So it wouldn't, wouldn't be that heavy. Correct. That, that's a whole different right. industrial yeah, use. Just, that was an area this. I was familiar with. That, um, there's a light industrial uh, on Anthony. On the other side of the interstate, um, it's not highly built out yet. But Are you so referring to Michelle's and yeah, that, around and that area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. But we, I, I'm not sure that we have a. I was just looking for some kind of comparable to give us an idea of possible future. Well, I think the West Anthony, west of Cunningham, is a good example. That's probably um, the closest, yeah. You've got uh, Creative Thermal Solutions there, six, seven, eight facilities. Uh -huh. Soccer planet. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and a, uh, APL, Innocent Physics Lab, those are, that would be a, a good comparison. And, you know, they do have truck traffic there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. A lot of employees work over there. Right. So that would that, probably be a good comparison. Well, it gives us something to think about anyway. All right. Ms. Pearson? I have a response to Ms. Billman on the landscaping. Thank if, you. If I may. So for parking lot screening, if a parking lot faces a residential area, then you have the choice of either a fence or shrubs. Um, for landscape buffer, which is really about the side yard on the rear yard, that's designed to be landscape, so it softens, softens the area. I would, I would imagine that a lot of industrial areas, when they have any outdoor storage, that would be screened. Um, there's outdoor storage screening requirements, so that's usually with events. Um, but there's some, it, so the answer is it, it depends on the application. Thank you. All right, any further discussion or um, you feel, anybody feel a motion um, or further discussion is in order? Ms. Bilbin? I'm worried about future development of that area when it's, if it's fully developed. Great, thank you. Anything further? Well, I'll, I'll just add, the, it's going to be developed at some point. Sure. What it looks like, I think, is the issue before us. Yeah, I think we've, we've had two meetings on it, and, and it's probably time for us to dispose of it if we can. I guess I'm kind, of, I'm kind of wondering what, what would we envision this to be kind of the ideal, what type of development would be ideal in this, this area? There's the, the master plan, the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive it's, plan says industrial. It says industrial. Um, and if we think that light industrial is not, then something that would be against the comprehensive plan. But, but there are complications here. So I, I guess I'm just wondering what, you know, what would be in our view, kind of an ideal situation. Well, I was fishing for that in the last meeting, um, asking about the nature of uh, Mr. Borcher's business. Mm -hmm. And uh, does he sell materials? Uh, does he store a lot, large amounts of materials outside? Um, I read the definition of a construction yard, um, which uh, to me doesn't exactly sound like what Mr. Borchers is going to do on this particular part of the property. 
At this particular time. At this particular time. So, but it's the lowest zoning that, that a construction yard would be allowed, and even that is with a conditional use permit. So you can't go to any of the commercial zonings, can't go to neighborhood business. Um, so really, given the, the, the nature of the request and the uh, city staff's determination that this particular use would be a construction yard, we're left with IN1 for this particular mm -hmm. petition. Ideally, I mean, you asked what, what's the best buffer between the neighborhood and <coughs> Flexingate, to me, farm, mm -hmm. open space. But that's not what the comprehensive plan says, um, and that's not what the proposal is here. So. And I really don't see 11 acres staying as, as farmed property, you know. Well, I just... It's the, yeah, right. Yeah, I, 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 somebody's going to ask to bring this property into the city at some point. And somebody did. <laughs> this is this is what we have in front of us. I, I share some of the concerns about not knowing about drainage and not knowing about traffic, but since we have to dispose of a specific proposal to deal with a specific property, and I don't hear any um, suggestions for how to further amend or revise it, I'll just go ahead and make a motion to forward this for approval. Uh, okay, uh, a motion uh, by Mr. Ackerson. Is it second? Yes, I'll second Seconded that. by Mr. Storr. Any further discussion? Well, we'll have a, a roll call whenever you're ready. Madam Secretary. Ms. Billman? No. Mr. Fitch? No. Ms. Wadrago? No. No. Ms. Mr. Storr? Yes. Mr. Trail? No. Mr. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Ackerson? Yes. The motion is defeated. Four to three. Um, so uh, th this can still go to the uh, council. Um, and a remi reminder that this is an advisory body. The council can do whatever it uh, sees fit, and they're the, the uh, legal binding authority. And so. that committee of the whole meeting is Monday to consider this item. Okay, which is the 14th. 14th. Mm -hmm. Monday, July 4th, uh, August 14th. Lost a month there. All right, thank you very much for your testimony. I appreciate it. Uh, now, <clears throat> we don't have any old business. I don't have a new public hearing. We do have some new business, which uh, is a selection of a plan commission representative to the MOR Development Review Board and the Design Review Board. And so, Ms. Pearson, if you want to uh, speak to that. Sure, the MOR Development Review Board and the Design Review Board have a position on it designated as representative from Plan Commission. That person was formerly Danny Otto, as we know, he has stepped down. Um, so um, that is pretty much the basics. Um, they don't meet a whole lot, they meet as needed when cases come up. Um, it's two separate actually three separate um, sets of design guidelines, um, one for the MOR Development Review Board and two for the Design Review Board. And um, I will say that Nancy Way Drago was on the Design Review Board, so I don't know if she could answer any specific questions on what it's like, but. A question of, uh, I don't recall us taking any action on these, um, I don't know if any action is actually required on our part. The bylaws are really kind of silent yeah. on it. So we, could, we put we it on the agenda in case you needed to vote on it. That way it's, you know, official. And, and do we have a candidate in mind? Well, Nancy has suggested that she would be willing to continue to serve in that capacity on the Design Review Board and, on the, and then to be added at, to the MOR table. Development yeah. Review Board. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to three boards. <laughs> so, any further discussion on that, or we just want to 
sort of by acclamation assent. Great. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, I uh, guess that's that. Uh, there's no audience left. We don't have a staff report. No study session. Therefore, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>